Today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. Having a partner that understands banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. It's about being connected. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is a news break for Tuesday, October 11th. I'm Brad Locke. Thanks for tuning in. If this is the first time you've joined us, just to let you know what we're about, giving you a quick update on news, sports, and weather five days a week, coming to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. You can find us at djournal.com, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and also your D Journal app on your Apple or Android devices. So let's start out with a look at the weather underground forecast. For today, we're going to have clear skies, high of 84 degrees, a low all the way down to 49, a 0% chance of rain. And the three-day outlook, Wednesday, clear skies, high of 84, low of 56, a 0% chance of rain. Clear skies again Thursday with a high of 85 and a low of 59, a 0% chance of rain. And Friday, partly cloudy skies, high of 86, low of 61, and a 10% chance of rain. Okay, let's take a look now at some of the top stories from your daily journal and djournal.com. And speaking of the weather and the dry conditions we're under lately, local farmers, growers, and homeowners could sure use some rain, but that's not happening anytime soon. Northeast Mississippi has been dealing with drought conditions for several weeks now. In fact, the region hasn't seen any significant rainfall since August, according to AccuWeather meteorologist Frank Strait. He described conditions as, quote, bone dry, noting that we've had no rain in October and only got 43 hundredths of an inch in September. The region normally gets about three and a half inches during that month. So that's made it tough for folks like Ronnie Downs, who has 85 acres of sod. He's trying to keep in good condition in Baldwin with above average temperatures and an abundance of sunshine. The grass has kept growing, meaning more water is needed. Now Downs has a giant sprinkler that pumps out 18,000 gallons of water per hour so he can easily get his field watered. Problem is, the creek from which he draws his water is running very low. There is an outside chance of rain for the area on Thursday and a slim possibility on Friday, but otherwise, Strait said it will probably be dry for the first half of November. A grand jury will decide whether charges should be brought against a woman who ran over and killed a seven-year-old girl as she was getting off a school bus last week in Pontotoc County. Sheriff Leo Mask said that 39-year-old Karen Michelle Carpenter of Saltillo will not be charged at this time. Carpenter was driving an SUV on Old Highway 9 North on October 4th when she swerved to miss a stopped school bus and ran over Amaya Braxton, a student at North Pontotoc. Mask said the investigation is still ongoing and will be presented to the grand jury in in January. He said he wants to make sure a full and detailed investigation is completed before charges are considered. The accident happened just before 4 p.m. last Tuesday. Braxton and her brother were being dropped off at their home and for some reason Carpenter's SUV swerved and passed the bus on the right side where the girl was struck. Approximately 15 other students were on the bus and Braxton's brother was pulled to safety by the bus driver as he was exiting the bus. Braxton's funeral service was held Sunday at the North Pontotoc School Gymnasium. The U.S. Department of Justice representative will visit Tupelo this week to evaluate the ongoing efforts by city leaders to rebuild trust in the police department. Walter Atkinson with the Justice Department Community Relations Service will be in town on Wednesday by invitation. City Chief Operations Officer Don Lewis said Atkinson is coming to listen to what Tupelo leaders are doing and to make recommendations. The Community Relations Service describes itself as a peacemaker in times of conflict over matters of race or other minority status. The service offers mediation, training, and consultation, all aimed at achieving mutual understanding. Tupelo Mayor Jason Shelton's administration recently formed six committees in an effort to enhance community outreach and engagement in the aftermath of the fatal shooting of a black man by a white Tupelo police officer. Atkinson will observe three of these committees in action. He will visit committees devoted to consideration of a police advisory board, increased community policing efforts, and changes to the city's hiring and training practices. The Justice Department is conducting a review of the June 18th shooting of Antoine Ronnie Shumpert by Officer Tyler Cook, but the Community Relations Service has no role in that review. 
And in sports, the slow pitch softball state playoffs start today and several area teams are looking to add to their trophy shelves. Three of those teams are Hamilton, Nettleton, and Smithville. Since 2006, those programs have won a combined 10 state championships. Nettleton last won it all in 2011 and lost in last year's finals to Philadelphia. Coach Jacob Kidd said the goal from day one has been to get back there. The Lady, the Lady Tigers bring a 23-2 record into their Class 3A first round series against Humphreys County. In Class 1A, Hamilton is seeking its fourth title and will face Ray Brooks. And Smithville, which owns five championships, travels to Hollandale Simmons to open the 1A playoffs. All playoff series are best of three and the state championships are scheduled for October 22nd. And that's it for news break today. I do want to remind you of a couple of multimedia offerings we have here at the Daily Journal. Of course, the Memo Podcast, all things Northeast Mississippi. You can uh, find that uh, three days a week, and it's a free listen in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. We had a new episode on Monday. We had Bobby Harrison on the show to talk about oil prices and how that's affected the state economy. Also had Michaela Morris on to talk about the dispute between North Mississippi Health Services and United Healthcare, and Lauren Wood discussed her in, fo her in focus photo essay about uh, a local college student. And also, Capital View with Bobby Harrison, our Capitol Bureau Chief. That's a webcast coming to you every Monday around 2 o'clock live at djournal.com. But uh, if you missed it yesterday, you can catch the replay there on the website. Uh, we talked about those oil prices and also we talked about the voting rights for convicted felons in Mississippi. Very interesting, interesting discussion that we had there. Uh, be sure that you uh, follow us on Twitter at djournal now. Give our Facebook page a like as well. And all the stories I talked about today you can find in your daily journal and at djournal.com. That's it for news break today. Hope everyone has a great Tuesday. We'll be back here tomorrow.